In this video we're going to be doing a radiator install uh, in a Polaris Razor 1000 XP. Uh, this is our radiator from Totally Cool Products. It is a two and a quarter thick radiator which is a two row of one inch tubes. Uh, it is twice as thick as the stock radiator. Uh, stock radiator is only one inch thick. I'll do a side by side comparison here. Um, as you can see it is quite a bit thicker. Um, we also make a mutter version for this radiator. Uh, what that entails is it has a lower fin count which results in the mud being able to flow through the fins still keeping your airflow to keep that coolant uh, cooling. Um, this is a triple pass radiator so it's going to come in the top third, come across, come back across the middle third, back down, across to the outlet, back to your engine, which results in more time in the radiator fins, which means cooler coolant going back to the engine. Um, also, uh, the stock radiator, bring it back over here, had its filler neck over here on the far passenger side which was as you know tucked back underneath the the hood panels and the plastic really tough to get to uh, with our radiator we have moved it over to the middle easy to get to we send you this hose that I'll show you in the video on how to where it goes and when to put it on but it just allows you to remote fill your radiator and not have any troubles with uh, filling it up anymore. Let's go ahead and get to the install. Okay, first of all what you're going to want to do is pull your radiator hoses, start draining the coolant, unhook your overflow tube, uh, these little uh, zip ties that are hooked to these upper radiator mounting bars. You want to remove them. You're going to want to take the bolts that are holding them on, the two in the back. The two screws on the front. And also, you're going to want to remove the grill. There's two little clips that you just push down. Remove that grill. Allows you to access uh, the front half of the radiator. A little easier to put it in. Okay. As far as any modifications that you need to do, uh, let's start with these upper mounting bars. This is your stock mounting hole where the rubber grommets come through. What you need to do is go back seven eighths of an inch, do your pilot hole right in line with the other hole. Get your pilot hole started like a three sixteenths, and then you're going to want to put a nine sixteenths hole in here. Clean it up nice. That way, there's no burrs chewing up your rubber after you're done. I went through and drilled them holes, repainted these up, made them look new again. Okay, now that all the hoses are unhooked, your fans unclipped, lift the radiator up out of the bottom pins, rotate at 90 degrees, and lift it right up and out of there. Uh, while you got it there, these wires, headlight wires, uh, Go ahead and just tuck them back over the shock, get them out of the way. Um, that way when you're going back in with the bigger radiator, you're not snagging anything on the way back down. Let's go back to the table and show you what we have to do to get the radiator ready to okay, drop. Okay, now we have the radiator on the table. We just need to remove the fan shroud from the stock radiator. We're not going to be reusing these bolts. Uh, our radiator has a different type of mounting. It's a stud mounting versus a bolt mounting. Um, you're going to want to leave the top grommets on the fan. Now on the bottom, I've already gone ahead and cut this little lip that was on uh, the bottom of the shroud. What I've done is I've cut the pins you can choose to save the pins if you'd like. There is no interference with anything. 
I uh, just cut them off for a cleaner look. But what you're going to want to do is cut these, this little plastic tab off right flush with the edge of where them pins were. You're going to take the rubber grommet off the bottom and you're going to put them on the bottom pins to the radiator. With that done, take the fan shroud. I'm going to take a, the flats first, then the locks. And then go ahead and put the nuts on and tighten them down. Um, you may find that the, you'll have to drill the holes out a little bit bigger to get them to sit tight against the radiator. Uh, they may uh, go in just depending on how your fan situates on there. But you want to just double check and make sure that they sit tight against the aluminum. You don't want that to get loose and be rattling around. Okay, now that we've got the shroud on here, the grommet's moved, we can go ahead and go back to the razor and slide that in. Like I said before, you want to make sure that you got them headlight wires tucked away. This is a thicker radiator. It's a little trickier to get in. What you want to do is set that in to about where the filler neck is starting to touch the hood. Just push down on the plastics get that to slide past once you're past that past your side go ahead and rotate it back make sure you get the bottom pins dropped in and this is where pulling the grill out is going to come in handy these little rubber or plastic shroud around the radiator some of them will fold in that way you can reach in push them out when you're sliding the radiator back okay. we also send a piece of half inch by half inch foam so when you slide this in you want to lift up this upper plastic piece that'll just keep this plastic from sitting there rattling also quick get you a little better air seal uh, for all the air pushing the air through the radiator versus escaping around okay, the we're side. We're going to put this foam right on the front of this upper frame. Make sure that's good and stuck. Okay, I'm going to start working that back into the shroud, that plastic shroud that's around there. You don't want to take your driver's side upper mounting bar, make sure you get your headlight wire back on top. And we're going to use that hole that you drilled, that 9 16 hole. Go ahead and put the bolt in to hold that. You just want to put them in finger tight for right now. That's just going to hold the radiator from slipping back out um, while we put this uh, fill hose. What you need to do, put your hose clamps on. Go ahead and put the short side of this hose to the tank side and the long to the filler neck. Have to slide that on all the way.
Okay, when you put this on, you want to make sure that it's not rubbing on this the frame here, and also that you're not rubbing on the plastic fan shroud. Make sure that you've got plenty of clearance and adjust your hose out to accordingly to where it fits without rubbing. Okay, you can go ahead and tighten up your hose clamps. You can go ahead and put on your upper and lower hose. Okay, then you take your other radiator mounting bar. Also make sure that your headlight wire is up on top. Oh, it's not down getting pinched somewhere that it shouldn't be. Get these started finger tight. Once you got them in good and uh, not cross threaded or anything, you can go ahead and tighten down all of them. Okay, now that you got all your hoses hooked up, you can run your overflow tube. Uh, we've removed the filler neck from over here on the pasture side from underneath this hood panel over to the middle to allow for easier access to fill. So you can choose just to put the hose on and tie up the slack somewhere else or you can go ahead and cut off um, the length of hose that way you don't have a whole bunch of hose hanging out there getting tangled up into stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this hose. Okay. Now the install's all done and they're mounted. You can go ahead and put your grill on, fill it up with coolant, make sure you follow uh, Polaris's recommended process on bleeding the air out of the cooling system. Uh, make sure your coolant bottles, overflow bottles full, and enjoy.